Hello everyone, welcome back to my Diamond Addiction. This is Valerie, and we are going to attempt a whip and chat. Um, in my Facebook group, and on a couple other videos, I've told you that I'm going to do a questions and answers. You ask me questions, and I will answer them. I did get uh, a few questions in the Facebook group. I'm, I'm going to start getting stuff ready here. Just give me a second. Uh, I did get a few questions posted in the Facebook group. The majority of them I got either private message to me or um, emailed to me. So, as soon as I get everything set up here, the area I'm going to be working on, uh, I took off some of these, two of these square parchment papers. So the area I'll be working on is right here. And it does look like it's, yep, it's in screen. Okay. So let me get the first color ready. I'm trying to see if I lean down to work on this, if I'm going to get my head in the way. Well, I hope not. Yikes. I guess we'll see what happens as I'm doing this. And if my head's all up in the way the entire time, well then, hey, I'm sorry. All right. So it is about midnight on Saturday. Had a good day with the family. And I got some stuff, some stuck stuff going on here with my AB gems. Uh, the painting I'm working on is I Am by Diamond Art Club. And I'm starting just with number one. And I'm going to work through and just go in numerical order. Oh, I probably should have waxed up my pen a little bit here. But I can do that while we chat. And I'm going to try to do this all this video all in one setting. Uh, but I did get quite a few questions, so if it turns out running long, then I will break it up into two. I wanted to thank everybody for their question submissions. Got a lot of interesting questions. So let's let's get into it. Okay, the first question. How long have you been diamond painting and how did you learn about it? I have been diamond painting for a year and a half, I guess, something like that. And I was scrolling through Facebook and an ad for diamond painting popped up. And I looked at it a few times and I just kept you know, that looks really cool. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And finally one day I clicked on the ad and I looked at it. And I thought, okay, that could actually be really cool. So I ordered one. Uh, I actually went on to Amazon and ordered one from there. 
Then I got, I've got Amazon Prime, so two days it would have been here. Uh, but I ordered it on a Friday, and they didn't used to deliver on Sunday, and so it would have been Monday. And I got really impatient and did some research and found out that they sold them at Michael's. So I loaded my son up in the truck or in the car. And we scooted across town to Michael's and I purchased a kit from there. Brought it home, worked on it over the weekend, and I fell in love with it at that at that time. So it didn't take long for me to become addicted to diamond painting. My very first one, and I was hooked. I've done several since then, so. Okay, I think that answered that question. About a year and a half-ish. And I learned about it on Facebook. Um, my favorite diamond painting I've ever done or bought. So for personal reasons, my favorite diamond painting I've ever done, I actually have two. One was the custom of my mom and dad that I purchased through Huacan. And the other was I Miss You uh, from Diamond Art Club. And that one I gave to uh, Mercedes and Henry in remembrance of their, their baby girl. Um, I already did a whip and chat about what happened with that, so I'll link that up in the, in the eye if you want to hear about uh, what happened with, with baby Emma. For non-personal reasons, uh, the one that I enjoyed working on the most that I've completed would be probably Nefertiti, also from Diamond Art Club. Loved it. Love how it turned out. I haven't framed it yet, but I do have it thumbtacked over there on my wall where I get to see it all the time, and I will be getting that framed here soon. Okay, how many whips do you currently have? Hmm. So, right now, I have I believe nine. Um, I don't normally like to have that many whips going, but I have this one, and I have one upstairs, and I have one at work, and then I have ones that I've started that's I've run out of colors that I'm waiting for drills. Well, I've probably gotten the drills in by now. I just haven't put it with them. Um, some that I just don't enjoy working on. I have the one um, also from Hua Can, back when there was square drills, when their square drills had the issues. Um... of my daughter's wedding. Uh, be a beautiful picture if I could just get past the fact that the drills pop off and they don't exactly fit right. Uh, I'll insert a picture here of what that one looks like or what it's supposed to look like. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm going across the top row. So I have kind of a guideline of where this is going to cut off at. And then down the side. And then I know I just do in between those once this gets full. 
Now, so I have nine, nine whips currently. Um, I see so many diamond painting, diamond painters with multiple paintings waiting to be done. Do they get them for free if they do a YouTube review or do they spend a portion of their paycheck on them weekly or bi-weekly? That is an excellent question. So, um, as a YouTuber, I have been asked to review some canvases. Uh, usually when they contact me and ask me to review canvases, I am not paying for those. They do send them to me for review. Uh, the ones you see, normally when I'm doing those, I will tell you. This was sent to me for review. And those are the ones that I don't pay for. Uh, every other one, all the other ones that I unbox or um, do post reviews, whatever on, I do pay for those myself. I can't speak for other YouTubers, but in my experience, love when that happens with the AB. Okay. In my experience, uh, yes, I have been sent uh, kits for review. Like I did the, um, I did a review video for Dreamer Designs when they first came out, when I was an ambassador for them. I did not pay for that canvas. They did send that to me to do a review on. Uh, but the other two from Dreamer Designs that I unboxed, I paid for. Okay, this frickin' wax is going to make me angry. Um... But like I said, if I if I get it for free and I'm doing a review, I generally just tell you that I got this was sent to me for review. Um, however, just because, and I do let them know up front when they ask me to do a review video for them, I do let them know up front that I will be giving honest feedback. And I refuse, I did have one person that demanded that I give them a positive review and I refuse to do it. Don't even know what their canvases look like. Didn't get one because I refuse to blindly agree to give them a good review. I'm not doing that crap. That's just not happening. I am me. I am who I am. I will always tell you if I like or dislike the canvas. Sure, on unboxings, they may get a higher score. Once I've completed it, I've worked the kit. Then I know the issues that are with it. But I will never, never, never have somebody tell me they will send me a kit for review if I agree to give them a five-star review on Amazon and a positive video review. I won't do it. I would rather pay for the kit and give you an honest review. That's, that's my opinion on that. Yes, I do spend Uh, quite a bit of money out of out of the the paychecks that I get every other week but I've worked hard to get where I am and making the money that I am I'm very very blessed to have the job that I have and make the money that I do so I can afford to buy the things that I want. Right now, diamond paintings are 
the things that I want. I've also spent a lot of money lately on polymer clay. So then there's that. Uh, but that's getting completely off track. Next question. How does your husband, family, feel about all of your crafts? <laughs> well, they have... Okay, so let's start with the husband first. My husband is very, very supportive of the things I want to do. Um, he thought I was crazy when I told him I wanted to start a YouTube channel. But at the same time, he was very, very supportive. To this day, I don't think he's watched a single YouTube video that I've made, and I'm okay with that. Uh, he was with me when I was buying my a couple different kinds of lightings to try out. He was with me when I had to get a new phone because I broke my other one's camera. Yeah, he's he's very supportive. He looks at me kind of funny when I keep getting packages in. Um, but he doesn't ask. I don't tell. Uh, the one that I got sent to me, the very first review one that I got sent to me that I didn't pay for, uh, happened to be one of the ones that he said, how much did this one cost? And I said, well, they saw my videos on YouTube and they didn't charge me anything. Lucky me. So my guess is, as these packages are coming in, he is choosing to believe that I am a badass and Diamond Art Club continues to want me to unbox their stuff and send them to me for free. <laughs> like I said, he doesn't ask. I don't volunteer information. Another reason why I'm perfectly okay with him not watching my videos. Would he be that supportive if he knew how much money I spent? Yeah, he would. He might look at me a little bit differently when packages show up, but he's always very supportive. Um, my son that lives here, uh, the one son that we still have at home. Uh, he subscribes to my YouTube channels. I know he watches my videos once in a while. Um, he's been known to diamond paint with me in the past. Not so much anymore, but in the past he has. Y'all know Taylor and how she feels about my crafting and my YouTube channel. Um, I overall have a very, very supportive family. I'm very lucky that way. Okay, let's see. What other questions do we have here? Um, oh, I liked this question. How do you handle negative comments? Hold on one second. My dog is barking. Okay, I'm back. She wanted in the room. I had shut the door with her on the other side of it, so. Okay, how do I handle negative comments? It really depends. Uh, if somebody's leaving a negative comment about me personally, I don't care. If they're picking on me, at least they're leaving somebody else alone. Uh, I'm pretty tough skinned like that. If they are, I've had a couple people cross the line as far as Taylor's concerned. And that I don't tolerate at all. Um, I actually have a rant video up where somebody had said some things about me and about Taylor and 
I deleted their comment, I blocked them, I ranted, and then I moved on. It was over. That was that was done. It didn't deserve any more of my attention than that. Anytime you are putting yourself out there in the public eye, you'll get negative feedback. You'll get negative attention. You have people that have nothing better to do in life than basically be crappy to other people. Um, yeah. So for the most part, I ignore it. I also like to pin rude comments at the top of my videos. I think that's funny. Um, just because you've got a lot of people who want to say negative things, but they don't necessarily want to be recognized for it. Nah. If you're going to say something shitty to me, Sorry about that. If you're going to say something negative to me, I'm going to pin it. Everybody can see it. Don't care. Even if it is bad about me, I don't, I honestly don't care. Get confused a lot by people who have nothing better to do than watch your video and then say, wow, that video was long, or wow, I can't believe you liked that canvas, or what if you don't like the video click off of it go to something else I don't there are plenty of people that I start to watch their videos and I just go you know what this really isn't for me um, for whatever reason and I just move on to the next video so the answer to how do I handle negative comments I ignore it I pin it, or if it's crossing boundary lines that I've set, uh, I delete it. Nobody needs that much negativity in their life. The world is negative enough, especially right now. Oh my gosh, but that's a whole other subject. Okay. Uh, do you like partials? And why or why not? I don't mind partials. Depending on how they're done. I have a bunch of partials, actually. Um, some of the... Some of the prettiest ones I've done have actually been partials. I really like partials after I work on some big, stressful project. You pull out a partial and you finish it in a day or two and it just feels like, feels so easy after doing, after doing the really long ones or really, really big projects. So yeah, I don't mind partials. Do you have a whole room for crafting or just a designated place in your house? both kind of so downstairs I have a crafting room which is where I'm recording this uh, and it is an entire room all to myself and upstairs I have a what are they called like a TV tray I guess um, that I have a smaller painting on upstairs for when we're watching a movie or whatever I can work I can work on a diamond painting up there if I want to if my husband and I are just hanging out and he's doing whatever he's doing upstairs and I feel like diamond painting I can do it up there so I do have a little designated spot that all that sits upstairs and I do have a craft room downstairs Hold on, I've got to get a drink really quick. Sorry about that. It was probably really slurpy. It was a very full soda. Okay. <clears throat> Will you start doing giveaways again in the future? Sure. I can do that. Um... 
let me think on it for a little bit. I've started making polymer clay pens. This is one of the ones I made. Uh, it still needs sanded and I mean it's relatively smooth. That's not the problem, but I need to put a gloss on it. Yikes. Um, yeah, I can start doing giveaways again. I thought it was a cute question. So maybe I will start Maybe sometime this week. Let me think about it. I'll post it. I'll post it in my Facebook group. I need to decide if I want to do it the same as I was before. If I want to switch it up a little bit. What I want to do with it. But yeah, I'm not opposed to doing giveaways again. I like giving people stuff. Okay, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? <laughs> um, I'd never done it before. Seemed like a challenge. Also seemed like something fun to do. I really didn't think that I would get, I don't know, I think I'm, 2,700, something like that, subscribers. Never thought that would happen. Never. Uh, when I got my first subscriber that wasn't my family, I was so excited. Called my son, and I'm like, Nick, I got a subscriber. Can you believe it? He laughed at me, thought I was being silly. But I was being serious. Um, and then when I hit a hundred, I think we went out to dinner and it's just kind of continued to grow from there. And now I'm, I don't know. I don't look really at my subscribers anymore. I, I lost quite a few when I took, I don't know, like six months or so when I took that time off I lost quite a few subscribers and that's okay you know I was the one that wasn't producing videos uh, so first of all thank you to those of you who stuck around appreciate you yeah I wanted a challenge I wanted something new and I I don't know I just wanted to figure it out See what I could do with it. Okay, next question. What do you do for work? Uh, well, I own my own business. Officially. I have one client right now that takes all of my time. Um, officially, okay, so officially my corporation is for consulting. Um, the one client that I have that takes all my time right now, I am, my title with them is office manager. Uh, so all the emails I send out for them and everything mm -hmm. say, I'm the office manager. I thought my Echo Dot was just going to go off. Okay. Um, they all say I'm the office manager. I handle payroll, accounts receivables. Um, basically, I just run their office. And I... Yeah, that's what I do. So I work for myself. I have my own corporation. And as of right now, I have one client that keeps me so busy, I don't have time to get another one. It is 
is for a construction company. And the people technically that I work for are amazing people. I like the fact that I can set my own hours. I pretty much come and go as I want to, as long as everything there is covered. I make my own schedule. Okay. How many diamond paintings do you own? Uh -uh. Nope. I'm not sure I want to actually spit that number out there. Okay, I did say ask a question, I will answer it. So I'm going to go ahead and answer it. Uh, so listed in my book, I number each diamond painting. Now there may have been a couple in the very beginning that I did that I didn't enter into the book. Uh, and I just have four that I ordered from Diamond Art Club today that were the new releases. Yes, I ordered all four. Um... The last number, I haven't, so I haven't entered those four into the book either. So if you count those, I would say three, 375 ish. Now some of those are done. Some of those I've given away, uh, but that, that should be pretty close to the last number in my book. No judgments. It's my money. I'll do what I want. And I'm not apologizing. <laughs> also keep in mind, you know, I got a ton of them from New Frog. So they're partials. So. Uh, how do you store your canvases? Many, many different ways. So my diamond art clubs, I keep in the box that they came in. I used to take them out and put them with my other ones, but I just decided it was just as easy to keep them in the box and up in the top of my closet. The other ones, so if they're big, I hang them in my closet on pant little pants hangers, skirt hangers, whatever they're called. I hang them on those. Uh, if they're not a big size, by big I'm talking 60 by 80, 50 by 70, anything like that I would hang up. Other than that, um, I have, I went to the dollar store and I bought a bunch of the I don't even know what they're called, presentation boards? Where you've got a chunk of cardboard and then the side folds in and the side folds in. Those, portfolio, I don't, I think it's a presentation board. And I have them labeled partials number one, partials number two, round number one, round number two, square number one, square number two. Uh, and I put the canvases in there and then I have these little clips that I put on the top and the bottom to hold everything from falling out. I stand those up in my closet. Uh, my whips I have sitting on a dresser next to me. My completed canvases I have on another dresser behind me. And other completed ones that still need to be framed, I thumbtack around the border and stick them to my wall until I can decide how I want to frame them. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, how long has Taylor lived with you? So when Taylor was born, uh, Jessie, her mom, lived with us. So she lived with us through that period. Um, 
And then she lived with her mom and dad for a year-ish when she was two. And then when she was three, three, maybe three and a half, uh, she's lived with us ever since. We got full legal guardianship of her four years ago. And she's lived with us ever since. Uh, she does go stay at her parents' house with her little sister once in a while. But for the most part, she she's just here. This is home. This is where she's secure and happy. Do you make a lot of money on YouTube? Not nearly as much as I spend. Um, like I said, I did this for the challenge of it. I didn't do it to make money off of it. Yes, I do. I do make some money off of YouTube. Um, but not enough that I would recommend anybody try to... Not enough I would quit my job or the work that I do. For YouTube. I hope that made sense. How many kids do you have living at home? I have my youngest son who just turned 18. He still lives at home. And we have Taylor who just turned 8. Who also lives here? Okay, so that's what we who we have living at home. Uh, <laughs> is the car in your videos a Mustang and is it yours? Yes, it is a Mustang. And yes, it is mine. My husband got that for me for our anniversary. And I absolutely love it. Um, what is your favorite place to order kits from? So this one is not a hard question for me. Uh, it's Diamond Art Club. Hands down. I did just do an unboxing video of a Dreamer Designs. I'm excited to see how, how that one turns out. Uh, but as of right now, it is Diamond Art Club. I love their, their quality of canvas. I love their drills. This is a Diamond Art Club. Yeah. So Diamond Art Club for the win. How do you choose a diamond painting? I'm not exactly sure how to answer that. Um, if you're talking about how do I decide which diamond paintings I'm going to buy, if I like the picture and I think it would be fun to work the kit, I'll buy it. If I don't, well, then I won't. Um, if you're talking about how do I choose what size of a painting to buy, I try to keep it reasonably sized, but I want to make sure that I'm going to get enough detail out of it. So if it's a really big or a really detailed painting, it's going to need to be big. Um, if it's like I got one of Mickey Mouse 
and it really only needed to be 25 by 25 because there wasn't a lot of detail in it. So I go by the amount of detail that I want to see in it and choose my size according to what I feel will give me a decent amount or a good amount of detail as well as, like I said, try to keep it decent sized. I don't want a wall sized picture trying to keep the detail. Okay, time for another drink. My throat's getting dry. Uh, you posted a picture of pens you are making. Are you going to sell them? And can I request custom colors and designs? <laughs> My goodness, I just started making them. Um, am I going to sell them? I don't know. I probably could. I don't plan on opening a shop with them or anything, but I could probably post them in my Facebook group and see if anybody, if anybody would be interested in buying them, I guess. I don't know. I would have to think about that. And as far as requesting custom colors if I start making them more often to sell uh, I could probably do custom colors but custom designs I really just started making them so my knowledge of making them is very limited Custom designs would probably freak me out. Many, many sleepless nights trying to figure out how to make polymer pen designs. No, thank you. Um, but colors of a design I already have, psh, I guess I could try. Um, hold on a second. I'll just grab the clay pens that I've made so far. Some of them are okay, some of them are super not okay and crappy. Um, like, here's one of the very first ones that I made. Look at all the ridges and wow crapness of that one. That one's horrible. Uh, and then I moved up to this one where I learned that fingernail marks do make a big difference. Um, those ones... Um, and then I made all the, the pink ones. And also the one I'm currently using. Made that one. All those are made out of the same thing. I made this one a little fatter. So there's those. And then here's one where I did a, a horrible goof up and tried to add just a little bit of glitter to it and... Whoa, the amount of glitter that got added. So that's awesome. Here's one of the first ones that I did that, again, learning how to not leave air bubbles and fingerprints in them. And then I've got these ones. Am I even setting them where you can see them? Yeah, I think so. So there's like that, and orange and black. This one right here needs sanded a little bit, but I was trying some stuff with some blocky stuff. I don't know. Uh, swirls. More swirls. Getting pretty good at the swirls. <laughs> Some green and white swirls. Uh, 
tried doing like a marbly effect. And then there's this one. And this one with some little additional bling bling sparkles. And then this one. So yeah, that's what I've played around with so far. Um, I do have another one that's waiting to be baked. But all those need sanded and uh, gloss stuff put on them. So I'll probably end up doing um, maybe like my beginner giveaways, just give away some of these. Okay, I think I answered those ones. After listening to your whip and chat about Emma, I have two questions. One, how is your family doing now? Uh... You know, it's been almost a year since that happened. It'll be a year next month. We're okay. We're hanging, you know, you, life keeps moving and you have to keep moving. We do special things to celebrate Emma and to remember Emma. Um, today. We had a baby shower for Mercedes and her family. Uh, we were kind of keeping it, I was kind of keeping it off my channel a little bit to make sure that everything was going to be good. Um, we just decided we would keep it private for a while. But she is due. He. Okay, so she, Mercedes, is due with him, the baby boy, uh, April 21st. Which happens to be exactly the due date they had for Emma. Yeah, tell me that doesn't give you a little bit of shivers. Um... This baby's had all the genetic testing, and he is completely healthy. Um, she's got, was it five weeks? Five weeks left? She's doing great. Um, Sky is super, super excited about her little brother. On occasion, she cries about her little sister. Uh, but for the most part, she's just very excited for the baby. And on another side note, I know this doesn't have to do with Mercedes, but uh, my other daughter is also pregnant and due June 26th. And she is pregnant with a baby girl. Also had the genetic testing done and also everything is fine. Yeah, so I got two new grandkids coming. Very excited about that. Uh, and then quest part two of that question is, I made something for Mercedes and her family. Do you have a place I can send it to? The answer to that right now is I don't. Um... I'm not overly comfortable with throwing my home address out there. Uh, I don't have a P.O. box, which I should, guess I should probably get one. I've had a couple people ask me if they could send stuff to me, and like I said, I've given a couple people my home address, but I don't. There's weirdos out there, man. I don't want to put my address out to everybody. So I probably need to get a 
a P.O. box. So I will try to work on that. I do appreciate uh, the fact that you made something for Mercedes and her family. Uh, and I'm sure she would appreciate that. But I just don't. I just can't give out my own home address. Especially for the safety of Taylor. People don't need to know exactly where she lives. Which is why when you see the packages I black out our address. People don't. They don't need to see exactly where my house is. Okay. Do you listen to music or watch TV while diamond painting? Um, both. Sometimes I listen to music. Uh, right now, when I'm not recording a whip and chat, I am watching Madam Secretary on Netflix. I finished off West Wing. I'm all caught up on Grey's Anatomy. Um... I'm also watching Walking Dead. Love that show. So yeah, there are several things. My husband and I are watching Joe Kenda. I know that's not what it's called, but right at this particular moment, my brain evaded me and I don't remember something, something about murder. Uh... Joe Kenda, cop from Colorado, and all of his stories about how he solved murders. The man was brilliant. Is brilliant. So yeah, I also listen to audiobooks. I like to listen to those a lot. I don't craft in silence, and I'm not sure if you can hear on the video um, my brother, who also lives with us, and... My son are out in the family room and they're laughing and joking and I can hear them so probably you can too if you can. Sorry, but I can't stop laughter in my house. I actually quite like it. Uh, what does a day in your life look like? And would I ever consider recording it? So a day in my life, wake up at 7.30, get cleaned up, wake up Taylor, um, get her hair done, she gets herself dressed, I get myself dressed obviously, um, do her hair, get her breakfast, get her stuff ready for school, pack her gymnastics stuff if she has gymnastics that day. Take her to school, drop her off, go to work, work until she gets out of school, pick her up at school, uh, bring her back to work with me if I still have more stuff to do. If not, we come home, I clean up the house, get whatever we're having for dinner out help Taylor with her homework, we read, hubby comes home, either he makes dinner, I make dinner, whoever makes dinner, or we go out to dinner. While eating dinner, we watch a Joe Kenda, clean up after dinner, get Taylor showered and clothes set out, hair braided for the night, uh, get her in bed, have some hangout, a little bit of hangout time with her. And then I will diamond paint or um, read, listen to music, play ARC on the PlayStation. Uh, I play a game on the computer called Horse Academy. Love that. So I have a couple hours of my own quiet time go to bed really late because I enjoy my quiet time. 
wake up in the morning, start all over again. Would I consider recording it? Only if you wanted me to record the most boring video on earth. My life not exciting, although hectic and crazy. I can't imagine anybody wanting to like actually watch a day in my life. Yeah. Sums that up pretty well. What else we got? Why does Taylor do videos with you? Now, in this email, they did preface the the question with um, they enjoy watching Taylor in the videos. They weren't trying to insinuate she shouldn't do videos with me. They were just wondering why, what started it. Why I decided to let her and why she does not with me. Um, she does them with me because she really enjoys it. She likes the fact that she's on the YouTube. Um, one of the first videos she recorded with me while I wasn't looking, she stuck her face in the, in the camera, didn't notice it till editing laughed so hard thought that was hilarious um we have days where it's fun to do videos with her i have other days where it tries my patience a bit um so we're trying to be more selective as to what videos she does with me now after i took the six months or so however dang long it was after after i took that time off um she's very excited to do videos with me and she watches a lot of kid YouTube videos. Uh, so she tries to mimic them. So if you've noticed that she's getting more chit chatty. Um, that's why. Yes, she wants to start her own channel. Uh, she wants to make slime and try out different candies and try out different toys. And oh, so many things she wants to do. Um, yeah, she wants to, uh, hubby and I have talked about it. We're still talking about it. We're not sure what we're going to do with that yet. Oh, what does your husband and family think of you having a YouTube channel? Is your husband supportive of you doing that? Uh, I've already answered that. My husband is amazing. He's very supportive. They all know I have one. They're all very supportive. Yep, that one's already been answered. Next question. I'm sorry if you can hear that. It is raining outside and it's hitting really hard outside. Um, here's a personal question. Not like super personal, but do you have any piercings or tattoos? Yep, I do. Um, I have a tattoo right next to the front part of my hip bone, kind of between my hip bone and my belly button. Uh, first tattoo I ever got. It's a little devil. And I have a tattoo on my back. And I've had my belly button pierced. I got pregnant afterwards, and that was before they had pregnancy jewelry that you could wear. Um, so I took it out. It closed up. Not doing it again. I've got my nose pierced still. I have no issues with people with tattoos or piercings. I also have this dumb little tattoo Okay, so that's actually the first one that I got, did, um, a forget-me-not dot. That's the first one I did. Still remember the people I did that with, so the forget-me-not part worked. Do I like it? Really, it's a little tiny dot, or it's a dot on my hand. Not so, 
don't like it so much, but it's part of my history. It's there. Uh, what is the best piece of advice you would give a new person wanting to make a YouTube channel? The absolute best piece of advice I could give you is be who you are. Don't try to be somebody else. Be who you are. Have integrity. Have honesty. Prepare yourself for highs and lows. You will have both. Um... Yeah, be yourself, I would say, is the biggest piece of advice. Find a subject you really, really like. And just go for it. Okay. How long does it take you to make a video? So this is like a three-part question here. How long does it take you to make a video? What do you use to record videos? And what do you use to edit? I need a drink again, hold on. Okay, so let's take a normal 20 minute video. Let's just say that's what we recorded. Okay, so it takes me a minimum of 20 minutes to record it. Um, as I'm editing it, that includes me putting it into the editing software, watching the entire video, um, taking out any pieces I don't think need to be there, adding, oops, I'm sorry I did that, or hey, I forgot the price of that was this, those little things. Um, so editing will probably take me on a 20 minute video, probably 30, 35 minutes. And then I have to export it, which will take another 10, 15 minutes, depending on different factors, how much stuff I've put into it, whatever. Um, so the rendering which gets it into video format with all of the intro and outro and all that on it. Then uploading a 20 minute video, depending on how many people are using our internet at the time, can take 15 minutes to two hours depending on our internet signal. Then once it's uploaded, then I have to go through and um, put the exit screen, put anything in the eye that I said I was going to, fill out the video description, fill in the keywords. All of that takes probably another 20 minutes or so. Yeah, that's about how long it it takes to make a 20 minute video. I didn't add all those together. If you want to, you can. Maybe when I'm editing, I'll keep a running total across the bottom or something. Uh, it takes a while to make a video. What do I use to record videos? I have a Google Pixel 3 um, that I record videos on. Editing videos, I use KineMaster. It's an app on my phone. They also have it on the computer. I haven't used it on the computer. I just use it on my phone. Um, and last question, just because this was, this was my favorite question. I thought it was funny. Do you want to be a famous YouTuber? 
first off, I need you to define famous. Would I like to be a well-known YouTuber? Eh, sure. Do I expect that to happen? No. Am I going to be sad if it doesn't happen? No. Like I said, when I hit 100 subscribers, that was like highlight of my life right there as far as my YouTube career goes. Took everybody out to dinner. Had a celebration. I look at that now and it's kind of silly, but for me it was a huge milestone. I didn't expect to have, have that many subscribers. So, thanks to all of you. I'm still hanging in there as far as subscriber count goes. And I'm not actually positive that I would want to be one of those, ooh, you're famous YouTubers. They got too much crap and drama. I can't imagine, I don't know, going out to dinner with my family and having people recognize me that I don't know. I think I might find that kind of creepy. I like having my own little private world that I live in. Yeah. Okay, let's see how long this baby is. Oh, not bad. An hour and six minutes. Um. Yeah, I think I answered all the questions. If you want me to do a video like this again, psh, keep sending me questions. It was kind of fun. Like I said, if you send them, I'll answer them. Didn't really want to tell you that I had 370 some odd canvases that I had ordered, but hey. Stick to my words. So if you have a question you want answered, ask it. Uh, post it in my YouTube or my, my YouTube. Wow. Post it to my Facebook group. You can PM me. On Facebook, uh, you can email me. My email is down below. The link to my Facebook group will be down below. Um, if you have a topic you would like me to do a video on, I'm, I'm open to suggestions, to questions, to whatever. Uh, you have a, a place you want me to try, let me know. I'll try it. And I think with that, my throat is really dry, really getting sore. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Stay safe out there, everybody. That's it's. I know for sure it's crazy here in my town. Uh, and from what I'm seeing on Facebook, it's crazy everywhere right now. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Uh, I'll do, do what I can to answer those as quickly as I can. Uh, I thank you all for listening to my random babble, watching, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!